Yo, what's up, guys? What's up? What's up, bro? Last day. Right. My numbers aren't really high on the Carrasco either. But we saw him, and you've seen him pitch really well this year for the most part. Uh, last start, he did fall apart a little bit. So it's kind of some unknowns there. And that makes the side a little bit tougher. It kind of makes the total a little bit tougher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up? What's up? What's up? Plus 110 as a deep pick. What that means is you might be buying a seven and a half at better odds. Either way, I think it's a big thing. I can't give it an A grade. Like I said, I'm just, I don't know what either one of these pitches. They can both go off and go great. They both can struggle. The unders have been the way they look so far. Um, it definitely does not like this uh, nearly as much as six and a half. I see it. I, I don't see it in there. But the wind's blowing in six year weather. It's, it's a weather under. We still have not warmed up yet. It will happen throughout this month. It just doesn't happen yet. So I think under is the way they look. We need to be great. It's, just, it's weird how like this fucking yeah. shit's happening exactly the same, bro. This is so dope. What's the early hook on him? Ain't got the bullpen in. This, this, this is pretty dope, that, honestly. Yeah, it is. Yeah, dude. This means that we can if we, if, we, if we can. Okay, all we need to do is figure out the patterns and the language of what we're doing. And oh my god, Which is very true. That only then is that I think that's when we're gonna. I like the full room under in this case. If both pitchers are on, I'm our wealth is gonna be disgusting. Yeah, very true. 16 Eastern first pitch, Podge Podge. Mike Clevenger, back from all the injuries he's suffered for a long time since he's him, versus his former team in Cleveland and Zach Lusak. Weather-wise, I'm not sure if this game gets in. I'm not a, I'm not a weather forecaster. We'll be in the low 60s, but a lot of rain in and out throughout there. It does happen. It looks like the winter is going out. Wow, guys, this is amazing. That's yeah, about 10 miles an hour, so a little extra. Uh, jump off the of, off off of that there, but again, I, I don't know what the rain's going to do on that one. Just if you're if you're a DFS player or for fantasy baseball, you know. Yeah, I, don't know. I guess this could probably this could probably do. I don't know. That has oh, to be some data too. Oh, wow. that what? <laughs> what data can you use to backtrack? Like ESPN uh, uh, out there right now. Does, uh, this you, does this give you wins? Too, no, you would have to go on. Uh, you would have to go on ESPN for that. Uh, the good thing is you have access to that, so that's good. Yeah. Kind of for similar reasons, I don't really know what to do. I just got to like basically just team up with somebody, bro. It'll make it easier, you know. Yeah. I mean, you have you have access to the data, which is good. So you got the data down. Uh, but with that wind blowing out, yeah, because like it's not yeah, like I've noticed like if the money's going one way, like a lot of money's going one way, like that game I showed you, then it's more than likely like the, it's gonna be flipped over to the other team. I think I'm gonna but I like it less than most of the other picks that I have today. Adding Fantastic Castellanos. You know, just a beginning or two early in the season. He's actually done like a start twice. One okay start, one really bad start. I definitely don't trust him at all. The model says Marlins minus 185. I like this enough. Marlins minus 181. A grade for me. It's a lot of units to lay because you're trying to win three units with like four and a half. I don't love that. You could burn this in that Boston game. <laughs> last Friday, <sighs> Saturday, and which one. But in general, I just think it's the right side. I think this should be a lot closer to minus 200. The Diamondbacks have been playing better Shit. as of late. They've been Throughout the fucking games, analytical. In several games. I just think the Diamondbacks are a much Whip better. Whip is Peterson, more than 1.78. So, it's up to go, it's up to go win all those games. I might do this. I might take the Mets on I this one. I trust the Marlins a whole lot more. I think the Marlins are the way to go here. I think the Marlins are the best. Where the fuck is... I might take the Mets game right now. The Mets, nice. Yeah. It's at minus 110. It's even It's even money. Bro, you can go with like... Yeah. I'm... Yeah, because... The pitcher that they have compared to the pitcher they're playing against, the pitcher that they're playing against is not that great. I'd rather back the Marlins, given how few hours I'm not sure. 
I'm just gonna make like a little small bet on that. I'm not gonna do create nothing crazy though. I'm liking the matchup. Right now, there's no line out on this one. It's Kyle Wright versus Big Fusion. The weather can even chillier. Wind's still blowing in, but maybe shifting a little bit across for this one. The model says Mets minus one or seven. What I'll say about this one is we do not pick Kyle Wright around here. So we'll see what the number pops Kyle. up. Kyle. Uh, 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 that's underplay. Yeah, the pitcher that's pitching today for them is like, uh, I see the roster and they're the pitching leaders, and he's like almost dead last. Oh, for real? Yeah, bro. And he's pitching with one of like uh, let me see here. I'm gonna go with Brave Mets. Okay. Six twenty-five Eastern first pitch Rangers at the Phillies. John Peterson versus Blazer Suarez. Weather's going to start up in the mid sixties, closing. In the yeah, Peterson on his team, he's top one, two, three, four, five, six. He's top seven. Phillies minus five. If you wanted to, you could go that direction. It's not a bad play. It's just hard to get excited about a small edge, and that's where the juice. If you wanted to throw, you know, eight tenths of a unit to one half a unit. It's not a bad play. I don't think the Phillies are the better team. Um, I have these two pitchers about even. Both of them solid. Um, maybe a slight edge to Gray, but it's, I mean, it's kind of rounding there at this point. Um, instead, I'll go under. I'll go under eight and a half to beat it for me. If I could get under nine, it's an A grade at eight and a half. Maybe a B. I like under. I'm comfortable with this pick. Um, but given. The Rangers bullpen that I just don't trust. Uh, it's just these random high scoring games, these games that you feel like shouldn't be high scoring are just just me enough caution to say this is a B grade and not an A grade. So if I used to the first pitch twins of the Orioles, Joe Ryan versus Bruce Zimmerman. Weather-wise, 68 degrees to start closing at around 60. Chiller as you move along. Wind's going across and no wind effect really. Model says Twins minus 172. So I'll play Twins minus 157. That's an A pick for me. It's a tough one between the side and the total. I, this is one of the ones that I eyed for so many moments and most of the other games. I think a lot comes down to how you feel about Zimmerman as a pitcher. Not fantastic at all last year. So far this year, obviously he's over pitching his metrics. It's, 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 you know, full stop. There's no argument that he's outperforming his metrics. But his metrics are better than last year. He, he's, he's, he's a pitcher that I, 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 it's hard to get a great feel at this point, this early in the season. It could easily just be that he reverts back to the average. He could be a little above average. Uh, that's the one. Let me share my screen really quick. One. I think the Twins are the better team. I think the Twins are the right side, and I want to be back to Joe Ryan, you know, one of my favorite form. But if you think the Twins are going to struggle to score, I entered a short at six zero two three. That's a cheese for that first. Oh, you entered a short? Yeah. Nice. I even thought about doing Orioles team total under. I just don't think they'll score off of Ryan. Okay, look, see how this we have a we have a wedge pattern going up. They've actually been in some higher screen games. That's kind of more who I think they're going to see, you see that how it's going up? One second, let me let me bring it in. Bring it um because I'm gonna do a split screen because I, I I got a I have a big position. Uh, oh shit, my bad, bro. Joe Ryan, the model hasn't Okay, so we have this wedge pattern, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, uh, and, and then we have this accumulation down. Mm-hmm. And hope, waiting for a breakout here. <clears throat> Look, it's kind of similar to this structure right here that we we do we had for this dump. What's that? <laughs> it's wedge pattern up. Uh, it's accumulation down. Yeah. Breakout. That's just. That's just. Doesn't it look kind of kind of kind of similar? <clears throat> it's just there's just I don't know. It's, it has a lot of shit. Maybe okay. You may, can you yeah? Maybe take off all the drawings. Maybe. Uh, 
Not take them off, but like, uh, you know how you can you can. Oh, I'm already up. I'm up. Yes. Something under one. I don't want to post this one on there because this is pretty high risk. Oh yeah, and then. Pitch. A little bit of a heartbreaker. The Blue Jays, uh, maybe, hey, maybe because look, mine. Uh, I'm already at one percent. Ooh, oh, nice. Thousand. I nice. Uh, as I said, um, I said it was a plus team. You got plus hold on one second. Actually, I'm gonna hit the right call. I think. Second. Play that one toss game where it's two two in the ninth. I won't the plus one away every day of the week. We're gonna slowly get we do that. We do that 162 times. We're gonna get several units just on those games. Like, I'm just gonna take like a I'm just gonna take some profit at a certain certain yeah, go for it, go for it. At a certain I'm gonna uh, work out that's baseball. Tonight we got Jason Zion versus a pitcher who I love, Alec Manoa. Quietly maybe because he's pitching one of the better pitchers and I'm giving it a B pit here rather than a B pit. It's definitely a B plus. You can kind of go either way on this one. Uh, I look under as well. It's just, it's like a lot of tight games. I mentioned this earlier. I think the best thing to do, I think, is to look at uh, if you want to do kind of like how I'm doing it, bro. I think you got just take everything out, um, like uh, naked, naked first, and then and then just kind of check out what looks familiar. <clears throat> the brain, like that's that's so much information. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <clears throat> um, maybe you can look at it from my my shit it was uh, well, it was April nineteenth, so I think it was yeah, it was April nineteenth. April. Uh, was the pattern so maybe you can go to april 19th and see if there's the same correlation pattern on the one hour two out one to four out no i'll say like one to two hours because that way you can see the structure it's easier to see um yeah true that that might be a i mean i mean i don't know but obviously we can do it that way too or i don't know how huh? i'm just following yeah I'm, I'm yeah i'm doing it uh i, I see this pattern and <laughs> It's on, it's on, on a daily, that might be that. That's too much information. Or, yeah, no, no. I'm, well, it's four hour. We have developed new tools to make it easy to create custom products and get them to everyone. Whether you're together now or still apart, custom make us come these products to help you feel connected. Upload your logo or start your design today at custommake.com. Oh. Yeah, right. There. Okay, so watch go on the go just go to like uh April 18th to April 20th on the four hour. And I think you and I think I can already I think I already spotted it already. It's right uh, right there. Um April. No 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 you go you go more go to, go to this year, April 19th. April. Right here. No, you're, that's April 10th. That's April 11th. It tells you the date at the bottom. At this point, James is primarily. So uh, that that uh, I already see the pattern. I already see it. It's short. points. So, There's nothing over the last two months uh, to suggest that he could do that in an efficient way. He just is not an efficient scorer. Kind of, uh, it's, and it's, that leg shows. Yeah, it's a fractal. Because he looking at that position, he's got a lot of money on the line. Events. Sort of tracking data backs that up. Yeah, that one right there. Um, we talk about top speed. This and year has been went, significantly uh, lower than here, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll, uh, his low buy rate is significantly lower. Yeah, than right here. Than prior to his hamstring injury in Brooklyn. Here. So Actually. we wanted to be aggressive, but to me, a, a lot of this I think comes down to uh, maybe a strategy shift on Doc Rivers' part. Yeah, no, no, JJ, there is nothing that we have not seen. I wouldn't even, I would go further than two months. I would probably go, you know, early time in, in, um, in Brooklyn. But that was different because he had two great 
uh, high level scorers right there. So you couldn't press him like that. Even with Joel and V down there, that will open up things. Sure. But there's a reason why he led the league in assists. He is more of a playmaker. That's what he did last season. That's why they were so successful with Brooklyn. But when you start asking him to go and score the 30 points a game, the 35, to have these explosions, he does not currently have that. It could be a hamstring. It could be just father time. Look, I, we're not going to talk about Westbrook, but you can see these things happen for players when they start hitting stages and you just see a steady decline. And if you don't have the work ethic, if you aren't doing all of the things that you need to pre and post game, and even in your downtime, these things start to have, happen a lot quicker. The decline starts to happen a lot faster. And unfortunately, we are seeing this right before our eyes. So that was game one, game two is tomorrow night. We know Philadelphia will still be without Joel Embiid. He, he didn't even travel with the team to my Miami and Doc Rivers decided to start DeAndre Jordan in his place last night, and uh, it didn't go so well. And I love DeAndre Jordan, but the 76ers, they were outscored by 22 points when he was on the floor for 17 minutes, and Doc, he was a little bit defensive, he took to the mic after the game in an effort to justify his decision. Take a listen. Talk to our guys. Uh, they wanted a the big guy, a big roller. Um, the second half, that's how he has to play every night. Like those first four or five minutes were great. Uh, and also, we don't need Paul and Paul Trump. And that's why we don't want to start him. So, uh, we like DJ, we're going to keep starting him, whether you like it or not. Um, that's what we're going to do because uh, our guys are there. Do we like it or not? Adamant that the Sixers will roll with DeAndre Jordan in the starting lineup despite the struggles in game one. And DJ, you have a relationship with Doc and with DJ. So is this the right move for Philly moving forward? No, no. The right move is to, to make some adjustments. And I love DeAndre just like everyone else. He's a, he's a great human being and was one of the best teammates I had. But I think the 76ers should adjust. They had some success in game one with Paul Reed on the court. I would even double down further and go small and play a non-traditional five. Hmm. There was a stretch there in the second quarter where uh, Tobias Harris went into attack mode, getting uh, buckets off the bounce. What James needs, what Tobias needs, what Maxi needs, they need space. And I would spread this bigger uh, pack-the-paint team in the Miami Heat. I would spread them out and attack off the dribble. And then defensively, look, they were at 0.65 points per uh, possession against the zone, 23 possessions last night. It was double that against man-to-man. -man. They had a lot of success in the zone. I would use the zone. Miami's offense is based around ball movement, player movement, and the zone completely disrupts that. Now, why are they playing DeAndre? Well, let's explain why they're playing DeAndre. Because James Harden doesn't have the burst that he normally needs. So you have a big, and that allows for a pick and roll. Now he's a little bit more, like, he, he's a lob threat to the rim, even though DeAndre's not the DeAndre of old. But that's part of the reason why DeAndre is getting those minutes. If you can run a pick and roll with James Harden, because he doesn't have that one-on-one -on -one burst. And, yes, JJ, you talked about it. James Harden needs space. But we've seen even in space, he's not able to get by that first line of defense. Go ahead, JJ. I, I, I can see your lips quivering to get something out. No, I, so I, just, I, I wanted to say something. So the, the idea of, of sort of James being able to operate yeah. a pick and roll uh, without a lot of shooting around him, I, I just I don't think that makes as much sense. J James Harden can't make two-pointers right now. Hmm. So, yeah, he's struggling from three. He's been even worse from two. So him getting downhill in a pick and roll against, again, a loaded defense in the Miami Heat that, that uses low man to take the roller – I just don't think that's the strategy, RJ. And we can disagree on this. I'm totally fine with it. No, no, no. I just not, like the other side. We're, we're, we're not disagreeing. We're saying I'm agreeing with you. I'm just, I'm just I'm just saying why yeah. they are playing DeAndre because they are trying to get some sort of advantage because James is struggling to make twos, he's struggling to hit threes, and he's struggling to beat his one-on-one -on -one defender. And so your thought, like, well, let's put him in a pick and roll with the big. Maybe that can open up things and hit some triggers. That's not doing that. It's not having that effect. So Philly, as much as we're looking for, well, maybe yeah, it has um, to have some sort of patterns too. There's not too many to be, to be made. Mm -hmm. of your players and your team has to play better versus it being an actual strategy thing because either one is going to be difficult. Okay, how about this? Right. No. Yeah, like this right here is identical, bro. Right, this team is somehow under. No, this is identical. This is identical. I can see all the moves right now. Oh. By the way, also out. 
for game two, the team announced that. What happened? And Jimmy Butler had some plays and stretches. What is the most impressive thing about Miami? And you can't say the beach is starting with you, Jacob. Most Performance follows. Yeah, there's a it's double edged because the guys in Triple A are thinking they're going to make, you know, uh, some proof out of Damn. having a big league pitcher come down and, and get to him. So uh -huh. the motivation. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off for a bit and then I'll come back yeah, like in. Uh, sure. There was a little disappointment. Uh -huh. yeah. so Thirty minutes to an hour. You guys still on? What do you guys? Yeah, you want to stay on, Rob? Or? I'll see y'all. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. It's to the question. All right, no worries. All right, I'll be I'll be back on. Okay. Okay. Later, guys. Oh, man. They know it's like two games today, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lefty pitch today with Lindor DH in game one. You get Guillaume at shortstop. Uh oh. My goodness. More special effects. The beer cap, it is coming back. You're seeing it at 3.8. On there, you got Tomas Nito, Nito doing the catching uh, today. McNeil and Alonzo around the right side of the infield. I never cease to be impressed by our art guys. Yeah, what yeah. they can do. Beard on, beard off, beard halfway on. Well, Travis Chantowski taking away the center field role today. Brandon Nimmo, at least in game one. Okay, this is first pitch foul back by Albies, and we're underway. Albies snapped an 0 for 21 streak last night. Went two for four. So a little bit better from the right side this year than from the left. Stepping from this side of the plate, two hundred. Yeah, up. bro. Cool. We're gonna get it, bro. We're gonna. We're gonna... Follow from the Braves. It came to town three games under five. Yeah, I. Before yeah, for me, like, yeah, I just need more insight with somebody that like baseball. I think it's just, I, yeah, I think it's organ, bro. I think it's organ. I, I just need like some help with it, and that's it. You know, like I like that, like because I know what's good, like with baseball. But I mean, you know, these who've been watching it longer, they've been they because they've been on it for with on baseball. You know, I just me, I would just I stopped watching it for quite some time. So and then I, I just stayed watching basketball. So I just need more insight on it. That's it. And then by next year, we'll be good. I mean, it may not be, but. It feels like you can it's all good, you know, like, off the outside. yeah. Again, nobody said this shit was going to be easy, bro. It's so I'm not tripping now. Yeah, dude. Yeah, because now, now you're looking at sports in a, in a way to make money. Yeah, I'm not going to stop. Yeah, I don't care, bro. Even I like, I've had more losses than anything, but I don't give a shit. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna master this shit. Though. I ain't gonna stop till I get it down, bro. Those are fun as an infield because it's just all reaction. I've been looking at these fucking bars for like five years, bro, and I still feel I barely feel like I'm starting to so. get it down. Yeah, for me, I just, dude, I just need like, I would say like a few months, and I'll be straight, you know, because I've been watching this shit all my life. So yeah. The Giorme show in the first deck, two out. Well, David Peterson has been pitching to more contact. Great to have the defense behind him. This was a really nice play by Pete on the pitch at first base to see Giorme fire that on the run. But this is an in-betweener, so he backs up right there to get the high hop. Nice job by Pete to stay with that one. They went with and there was discussion about what moves the Mets might Damn. people including you or they had that discussion and Walker basically cut that off. No, I just got I got a lot of, I got a lot of money on the line. So oh nice the defense yeah. that Yorbe brings to the table. I mean, sure Eduardo Escobar has played some shortstop in his career, but we need Yorbe on this team and resting because so wide. Austin Riley homered last night and takes a change up first strike. Riley's home run was his seventh of the year and his twelfth in just 121 at bats against the Mets. It's crushed the lefties so far this year. So this is inside of the fastball, two and one. Nice pitch by Dick. You got to get Riley at least aware of that ball inside. He's done well against him with three doubles and eight at bats. Good slider running out of his hands. It's two and two. This is a chance to 
Bucks three and two. I'm glad that Buck cut that conversation off because I think he already is a guy that you're not going to want to lose. He's got versatility besides being able to play short something to play on the Wells number nine. Last year, and he was continuing to play. Three two for Peterson. That's foul. Steady diet of sliders and change ups. The best of that for Riley. Washington that recently celebrated his 70th birthday. Third coach of the infielders, he was out with Bradley hitting his short ground balls on his knees the way he does. This is ball four, three two change up. Bradley is on the two out walk. Raise up the first base runner of the day. That's okay for him to be careful right there. Obviously, you don't want to get anything going with two outs, but it feels like he's got a better matchup right here with Azuna. Zuna 0 for 4 last night and 0 for 7 in his career against Peterson. Peterson facing the Braves for the fifth time. It's a 5.95 career ERA against the Braves. He was on the short end of that 20 to 2 game that the Mets lost in Atlanta last September. Back by Zuna. Braves will make their run to the division. <clears throat> yeah, bro, this shit, dude. Like, look, I can see exactly at what time, at exactly at this time. At eleven, at eleven, uh, you're at whatever it says eleven over here, <clears throat> and look at eleven over here, and then look what happened here at eleven. It went all the way down to this beneath this beneath this low, and so at eleven it should be going down here. Doing exactly what he said. Exactly, bro. I was doing everything. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm already. <clears throat> I already made fifty XRP. I'm already up fifty XRP, and then it barely moved, bro. It moved down like fucking three like little points. That's so you're shorting it? Yeah, I already, yeah, uh, yeah. I put twenty thousand in there. Maybe not twenty six years old. God damn, bro. Bro, and bro, if this happens the way it's supposed to, it's I'm gonna make I can make like three thousand XRP, bro, if it goes down here. Holy fuck. It's our pizzle. God damn. Yeah, Pitch by David right there. You can definitely tie up Lazuda, especially at the belt or above. Dude, I might just hold, I might just leave this position open for a couple of days because that's how long it took a couple of days to go all the way to its lowest point. Three days. Yeah, if I just hold it, then yeah, I, I can, I can make, let's see, I'm making Arizona. 11 days ago. I can make 2,500 XRP.
your journey. Own it in the Hyundai Santa Fe. The 2022 Santa Fe with complimentary maintenance and America's best warranty. New vehicles arriving daily. Only at your SoCal Hyundai. This is the cloud hoodie from the Travis Matthew Cloud Collection. So I'm here to show you guys how how soft this is. Have you felt this? You guys can feel this. This is the softest feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. Check out this cloud team. It is so soft. You guys. The memo setting the first game. Travis Jankowski will lead off for the first time this season. Mark Canna hit second for the first time yesterday. It is his first on Mars event, so he's back in that spot. You want Mandito at the bottom? 38 year old Charlie Moore knocked him out. So we talked about his curveball. It was top 40% four seamer. He's been struggling with his curveball and the command of it so far, but. When he gets that going, it's a really, really effective pitch for him. One of the best in all of baseball. The best year he launches eight extra base hits the entire season on his curveball. He's already about about five extra base hits on his curveball this year. So that gives you an idea of why that ERA is sitting at seven. Jankowski is eighth start of the season for the Mets. First batting leadoff. Third baseman rallying on the grass as Jankowski takes a fastball and tight the ball one. He's had his 22 at bats, and he has performed nicely. 400 on base percentage in his limited playing time. It's a slow ground ball. Hunter just has to charge a quick throw back in time. Jankowski with his outstanding speed. Yeah, once that ball went under Gordon's glove, Jankowski could smell the hit. It's out of my well, and he didn't take a great try at that. Wow. As soon as it got past oh my him, see, he smells it, and he's quick down a lot. Albies had no chance. I want Walker like it. It's good to have an umpire in the dugout. That's a leadoff base runner. Kowski already has a couple of steals this year. Let's see if the Mets are inclined to run early against Morton. Here's Hanna with his first Mets home run last night. Two for four. He's got a seven game hitting streak going. He's 356, just a seat behind Jeff McNeil, who's hitting 360. Pops the first pitch on foul. Darno comes back for a look. That'll be it. He jumped on the first pitch last night for a home run. We'll see him A lot of first pitches, he just took off. And swing one there against Morton, but last night he was looking for that fastball and got it. And that was a big load off his back. He put a big smile on his face in the dugout because he needed to get that monkey off his back. And so a lot of Charlie Morton last year made five starts against the Mets, but to a 2.36 E already. It seemed like his curveball was exemplary every time out. <clears throat> Last time in that street, more than later today, Kyle Wright is a bit of an outstanding group. More than three, very difficult to curve ball going. It's a lot more east west. I mean, it's much like Chris Bassett's curve ball. It's got some, a lot of downward tilt, but he gets a little more east west and gets some chase on it. Free is right up over the top and really tries to get you to see it in the zone and then out of the zone for swings and misses. Foul right, who has been a breakout star for the Braves this year, has started to throw his curveball exactly the way Morton does. The trouble on the third baseline. And their base running right now. They're coming in with their stats last night. They were very aggressive. We're going to see them. Total stolen bases in the first 17 games, but now none of the last seven games have only one attempt. It's just happenstance or back of ten. Very aggressive base running early. And one of the key base runners, obviously, is Starling Marte, who's going to have three times, which 
you don't really expect to get him to have him thrown out. No, not there from last year when he was thrown out only five times all season. Comes in out of Canada with Francisco Lindor on deck. Essentially foul. Braves defense lines up, drops Darno back behind the plate. This is the game one. It's Matt Olson, the new addition in first base with the gold glove under his belt. And Austin Riley in third. Outfield, they're keeping Duval in center field. Heredia, very good center fielder over at left. And then Travis DeMerrick playing right field today. Cunha at least getting the first one off. Playing for field or DH. I don't know what Cunha in the second game, but I stand here said he would play one game at a time. Yeah, I think that's just them being cautious because if there's no signs that he needs that extra bit of caution. He's running well, as athletic as ever. You know, they went through the Mike Soroka saga. I come back from Achilles and tore it again, and I'm, I'm sure that's got to be part of the reason for their caution. That's on the outside corner. Morton picks off the edge. That gets Canada for the first down. Plus, it was Diaz after that call. It's got a little late tail on it. You can see it's just outside, but the two strikes, that's a tough one to take and one that you expect Las Diaz to call. Three and will have to play the game one of its seven games in its beginning. He has thrown fire. Charlie Ramos joining the crew. Chad Fairchild. Chris Lindor is DHing and his limited opportunities. Lindor has been an unbelievably good DH this year. He's had one game as a DH, three for five with a ball. In his career, 12 games, 52 at bats. He's hit 462 with seven home runs. So he's really relishing the year with rare times that he gets half a game off. Seems like it's been the case of most of the events this year. Alonso's had some of his best games in the past. And you saw in that graphic that the door has not had success against Charlie Morton. Maybe they think this formula, getting him in the DH role against him, will get a chance to get a few knocks against him. <clears throat> Have some live so, trades in it. Live trade. Live trade. Oh. Last time on uh, this one shot. Alonso waits on deck. When Morton's been able to get ahead of Lindor, he spikes that curveball down and in, and Lindor has a hard time weighing up, and he's either on top of it or struck out on it a number of different times, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him go there. Yeah, just a short lead. It's not the sharp curveball we've seen from Morton over the past. It's something to feel for him. That's the pitching coach talking with last night's starter, Max Free. Braves came down. One, two, coming. Tries to lay off the curveball and stop it. Stop right. Go to keep that back stop. It's 2 2. The door makes it hit his foot. We'll see if it actually did. Oh, yeah. So the Mets are challenging this. The boots got the shoelace on the bounce. Well, we've seen a few of those back foot sliders, back foot curveballs this year that actually hit the back foot. So. It's not what you want to do with the back foot break. I mean, that gives you a feel for what he's trying to do with the door, though, because the door almost swung at that ball that literally, I think, hit him in the foot. And you see him almost wanted to go on that pitch, and then it's still just, yeah, you can definitely see there it. There we go. Short of pitch, short. Hopefully, he's pitching stuff that's on the ball. <laughs> Alonzo Marquez and Jerry Fields, their crew chiefs in the replay center. Transmit the call to Vlad Diaz. 
21 times this year, but Roger most of the majors. 